Well, it's 2 p.m. and we can officially start. So, uh, hello everyone who's in the attendees and everyone who's uh, in front of the camera, our guests. Uh, this is the second talk, the film talk that we organized at this year's Podgorica Film Festival. And we are incredibly happy to welcome Greta Fornari from the Torino Film Lab and our beloved film director, Ivan Saletic. Um, and we're going to talk with them a little bit about, a little bit more about the Torino Lab. And also Ivan um, was one of the directors in the project that's in production right now has been supported by this year's Torino Film Lab. Uh, and we would like to also hear a little bit about his experience. So first, welcome guys. And thank you for taking the time to be here. Thank you for inviting us. So Greta, I'd like to start with you. Uh, if you could tell us a little bit more about what Torino Film Lab is, um, why is it important? Who can who can participate? Is it something only for Europe, or is it something that you know any filmmaker can apply to? Sure. So um, to give you an overview of Torino Film Lab, I will also share my screen so you can have some visual references. So Torino Film Lab is an international laboratory that supports talents and filmmakers from the film industry from all over the world, actually because we, uh, for many of our programs, we welcome European as well as people for coming from, uh, from other countries of the world. Our main activity is training. We have five different training programs uh, focused on development. Um, the main uh, training we have, training programs we have are our, are our year-long program Script Lab and Feature Lab. Script Lab is for projects at an early stage of development, while Feature Lab is for projects at a more advanced stage of development. Then we have a program dedicated to the development of TV series, which is called Series Lab. Plus we have, from a couple of years, some intensive workshop, which are happening live in residential workshop in Italy, but also online since this year. And usually they last from four to five days and are called TFL Extended and TFL Next. So there are many activities you can, you can join at Torino Film Lab to develop your film project. Then we have our international co-production forum that we held every year in November in Italy. Uh, it's, a, it's a big event. We invite more than 300 professionals from all over the world producers, sales agents, film funds, etc. Our, I'm and sorry to interrupt you. Our interpreter just is asking for a little bit of a slower tempo so she can catch up. I'm sorry. Of course, of course. I, I'm going fast. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So um, in our uh, co-production forum, we have the public presentation of the film project we select. Plus, we have the meetings with the industry, so many occasions of networking, of finding possible partners, co-producers, sales agents, um, and it's, a, it's an important event to attend for filmmakers and producers. One more thing we do is uh, funding. We have both funding for production and funding for distribution. Funding for production, we have uh, the TFL Production Awards, which are for, uh, for emerging filmmakers because uh, it's connected to the Feature Lab program, the, the one, the program where even participated this year. Um, and we do, uh, we give awards from 40 to 50,000 euros, plus we have collateral prizes. Uh, and then we have funding for experienced filmmakers, which is our TFL co-production fund. Uh, most of our fundings are for international co-productions, but we also have some fundings that have no requirements, so it can be only a European production. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, last but not least, we have uh, the Torino Film Lab Audience Design Fund, 
which is our fund to support the distribution of, uh, of films, of international co-production in this case, uh, in two ways. We have a fund of 45,000 euros, plus with a consultancy from experts that help the team to develop uh, an audience engagement strategy and support the distribution of the film in three different territories. So as you can see, uh, we do a lot of activities connected to, uh, to film and to su the support of filmmakers in Torino Film Lab. Uh, but uh, mainly what we do is also trying to build a community of filmmakers, of film professional, where people can get to know each other and rely on each other for also for the future, not only in the year where they participate. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ivan, um, how was your experience, because your film was this year's in the, correct me if I'm wrong, feature lab category supported, um, how was the entire experience for you just, you know, applying and why did you choose Serena Film Lab to be the program you wanted to go for? Uh, well, uh, first of all, I think production-wise, uh, this platform is very important because uh, it gives you uh, a lot of support, there are a lot of awards, uh, there are uh, great visibility after you, you've been to Torino Film Lab, even if you, if you don't get any award, even if you've just been there like through this half of the year, mm -hmm. uh, your project gets, uh, got, uh, get, uh, gets uh, a lot of visibility, which is very important, especially if you come from a country with not so much developed uh, cinematography. So that's the first thing. And, uh, and well, uh, Torino Film Lab is uh, the best. That's that's also the the, the, the important thing. So, mm -hmm. for me as a, as a filmmaker and a scriptwriter, uh, if if I don't uh, look through the eyes of uh, you know from production side or, or point of view, uh, I not so much into this script lab. You know, doctors looking at scripts and stuff like that. But this is something completely different. I must, I must say this, that my experience is that this is not, you know, uh, like another uh, another laboratory for making uh, uh, projects that are all the same. Uh, here you, you really have uh, amazing projects, like very, very interesting projects all around, from all, all around the world. And uh, people there are really trying to, to, uh, to give you the best, to give you, you know, the, uh, the, the space as much as you, as you can, as you can get. So, uh, in a way, they are pointing in direction, is in the directions in which uh, you can go and uh, in which you can improve your own language. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that's, that's one of the best platforms for uh, productions and also for, for developing yourself as, a, as an author. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know, my experience uh, this year, obviously, it was very different uh, because it was all online. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, uh, Greta knows uh, how hard it is probably <laughs> because, you know, to put uh, all this system into into something something virtual, you know, you have uh, people from all around the world and then they are participating at the same time from mm -hmm. uh, different world, uh, different zones and stuff like that. So uh yeah it was i know i mean we all hope that this will not uh, happen again but on the other hand this experiment is something that you know you, you know it's uh, it's interesting um how was um the, you mentioned uh greta that um torino film lab is also a place where you want um people from the film community to connect and meet um how is the your experience from like an organizer's perspective when it comes to new emerging filmmakers who are trying to kind of you know find their path and find their way in the either european or global like film community through for torino film lab do you do you encourage emerging filmmakers to go in and try or is torino film lab something that's a little bit more for someone who's a bit, a bit more experienced, who has more credits and, and who's done already previously some work either in their country or, or in, in the region or in Europe. Okay, so uh, no, Torino Film Lab is also a place for very emerging filmmakers in the sense that we have uh, really a mix of people with different experience 
Um, for example, our program Feature Lab is only for first and second feature films. So you mm -hmm. cannot have a, a huge career uh, in, at your back. Um, and sometimes, of course, we have filmmakers who have already participated to international film festival and other times we, we put them together in the same group with uh, filmmakers who have uh, very, done very little but uh, are maybe very, for us, very inspiring. So um, it's not something we, we value, evaluate too much in the selection, but it's the, the voice of the filmmaker mm -hmm. and the project it's, itself. Um, and also it's, it's important uh, to have this mix and to, to put these people together because uh, what, what, each, what they can give to each other during the, this year of work together, it's really, it's really crucial, not just what they get from the experts, which are of course um, renowned and very experienced uh, film professionals and of course can, can help them to uh, get ready to, to, to present their project to the European and worldwide audience and to find uh, international partners. But also mm -hmm. what everybody can give to the other filmmakers uh, when confronting each other and working in groups. Uh, so we try to, to do work on this also as much as possible. Um, Ivan, your um, film uh, Melting of the Ruler, um, got this this very important fund and uh what are the next steps for you are you already stepping into post-production and how does uh, this entire pandemic situation that we're living in um affecting the the next process the the, the, the development that you that you're you know that you got supported by uh, by the torino film lab and the next steps of the film oh well um well, uh, Torino Lab was also very help helpful in that sense because, uh, you know, we were close and we are still close. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't, we, we cannot uh, travel, we cannot uh, do basically more or less, we cannot do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so this uh, experience with Torino Lab was also ex uh, important because I felt that I'm not alone and there are people who care and uh, you are among uh, Ten other projects from all around the world. We are in, in a way, we are in the same situation. And uh, if you kind of feel that now, you know why I'm, I'm doing this film and who cares about this film, and you know, and then there is another session of Torino Lab and you talk to people, and, and that's that's something that was that was also very helpful. So uh, we are waiting in a bit. We are waiting too long, but there are reasons for that. I mean, the situation is as it is. Um, uh, Torino was also helpful in in regard to to you know getting other people from other other countries to to participate as a co-productions, but basically we are waiting for open call in in Montenegro so we can we can get this uh, project off the ground and uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah I mean now we mostly wait because the screenplay is ready it's 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 finished and. Uh, and we are very comfortable with, with everything. Uh, people from other countries are waiting for our open call so they can apply, so they can, we can, you know, uh, get the finance. Uh, and basically we are waiting for the open call. We are waiting for this corona uh, uh, to, 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 <laughs> to uh, you know, to be finished so we can go uh, work something uh, with our hands, you know, so to, 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 to make uh, contact with people and uh, to see the locations, especially in this project, in this film, uh, almost half of the film is set in Italy. So we oh. have to go there to see locations and yeah. to see people. It's, uh, uh, for us, it's very tough now, but you know, uh, it's same as for everyone. Everyone is on the on the waiting line, it seems these days, and in all industry, not not just in the film industry, and and um, Danilo and Ogin were also previously in the in the previous talk talking about how the film industry also, among others, was affected by by the pandemic, not just in the way of financing, but also in shooting, because you're at that very process, you're ready to shoot to make your film, and it's just not in your power, and you probably as a director just want to get out and do it. 
Um, yeah, and you, it's it's a process that uh, you know it usually takes a lot of time to make a film. Anyway, it's very hard thing to do, uh, and now it's especially hard. And you kind of need every day you have to remind yourself why are you doing this film. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to keep yourself <laughs> motivated. Yeah, not to give up. Um, uh, Gata, uh, you uh, organized, all of you at the Torino Film Lab organized this year the, the lab online. What were the biggest challenges when you, and when did you know that you're going to do it online? Did you know it like straight away at the beginning of the pandemic when it started at the beginning of, of the year or you were still kind of hopeful that it might happen live and then you had to urgently switch into a different format? Okay, so no, of course we hoped until the end we could do it online because the, for example, for Feature Lab, the first session was at the beginning of June. So when the pandemic started in March, we did the selection online and then we were hoping for a, maybe a first workshop uh, live. Then we thought maybe the second is going to be live and then maybe the meeting event at the end is going to be live and then <laughs> nothing was live. <laughs> So we keep switching, but we did it quite quick in the sense that at Torino Film Lab, we did the first online workshop throughout April already mm -hmm. uh, because we our programs were supposed to start in March. So we, oh, we yeah. stopped them for uh, just a bit. And then as soon as we understood, we, uh, we tried with the online. And I think that the two main challenges were one, the, the issue of the time zones. Because of course we have people from all over the world, um, and also we had teams of writer, director, and producer which were separated in different time zones. Oh, so we had from Los Angeles to uh, Iran, which is about twelve hours difference. Ooh. So we we built the schedule, trying to find always, uh, almost uh, every day, or to find a moment where we could work all together. Mm -hmm. uh, so a time which was okay for everybody to do all the group session with all the participants. We were about 30 people and try to be all together in the right moment of the day. Um, and then the other thing was that we were missing that, that part of the residential workshop, which is uh, going to, uh, to have drinks together, but also yeah. organize. Every year we organize like a, a football match or a volleyball match, something very active to, to build a team. And we couldn't do this this year. So, of course, we tried to, to do the, the, the normal stuff online with aperitif and meetings, uh, but also trying to, uh, to do different sessions, which we usually do not do in a live workshop, in a residential workshop. Mm -hmm. We added some session, for example, only the directors all together without their producers and only the producers all together without the directors, mm -hmm. or we mix groups when working on the pitching training. Mm -hmm. So try to build a bit this feeling of uh, of community of uh, family which normally is created during a residential workshop which goes on for um, six to eight months because our workshop usually lasts like this mm -hmm. so this is what was the hardest and what we tried to work on and of course we can uh, we can improve uh, but of course we aim to go back to residential workshop and working together live as soon as possible um, are you as a as a program? Uh, sorry, <laughs> this was not on purpose. The music. Um, are you are you uh, on on this program following sort of success stories of the project you funded in different stages and and do the filmmakers, the screenwriters, the producers, everyone who kind of participated and and got support from you have this like maybe a, a community they can always go back to? Um, is there like a, 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 a formal or informal system? Yes, of course. We, we follow the, the projects that we support that come to our training programs or that we found throughout their career. And also then we follow our alumni. So um, mm -hmm. uh, what we do is, of course, once the film is ready, we have a, a work in progress section where we present the, the film which are ready to, to go into premiere to sales agents and film festival from all over the world. We do this in November during our co-production oh. forum. And then we organize uh, meetings for our alumni. 
and also maybe consultancies for our, for our alumni. So we try to keep track of it and uh, to follow them in their next steps. Okay, um, our translator is again sending me, we have a, a, a system of a signal, like a panic button, <laughs> when she feels that it's overwhelming. Um, uh, I, I wanted to ask you, Ivan, without giving away too many spoilers, or um, can you tell us a little bit more about what the film you're you got supported uh, by the Torino Lab. What the film is about? How did you start working on the project? And um, yeah, to give us a little bit of insight, what the inspiration behind the film you're working on is? Well, uh, I mean, uh, I was uh, I, I did this film uh, in 2018 it, uh, called "You Have the Night." It was uh, my first feature film, and uh, so. I don't know, this film was uh, about, you know, the people that I know and uh, set in the place that I really know very well, mm -hmm. uh, dealing with contemporary issues. Uh, so, I don't know, I mean, I, I felt like I had to go further into fiction, maybe, to experiment a little bit, uh, to, yeah, I don't know, to broaden the structure of the film. I, I didn't want to, to, to repeat myself, uh, so I kind of... Uh, came to idea to make a film that is set in 19th century, mm -hmm. uh, but also uh, with the idea that this will not be a historical film in a sense that uh, it will not depict certain, you know, uh, things from the 19th century, like, in, like in, to show how it happened and to, or stuff like that. So I, I just decided maybe if I put it in 19th century in the same place where I, where I, where I did my previous film, you know, how can I imagine people uh, from that time uh, in, in Montenegro specifically. Uh, and it came from this point of view. And then I, I, uh, I remembered this historical figure that we all know in Montenegrin history, and it started to be inspiration uh, for the film. So it's a historical figure. figure I, probably people in Montenegro will know, but I don't want to say uh, the name because I don't, <laughs> it's important, but this figure mm -hmm. is, also a bishop, a poet, and uh, was also a bishop. So we can guess, but we're, you're so not saying. <laughs> much guess, but the point is that it is not film about him. It's inspired by him and his last days, maybe. So uh, this film begins with the stories of uh, ordinary people in Montenegro at that time and their, their re relations with uh, the power and the authority of this man that is historical figure. But on the other hand, you know, film changes in a way, uh, it changes the perspective because from the, uh, we, ch we switch the perspective from the ordinary people in regard to this figure to the film that is actually depicting the other side of somebody who is a ruler. Mm -hmm. So it has many layers and uh, it changes, which is also for me something new. Uh, most of the film, we, we are following this, this, uh, this figure and uh, he's traveling to Italy uh, while being uh, gravely ill. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know if I, if I relieve <laughs> much of it, but yeah, um, I don't know. I think it will be something very, very new, especially mm -hmm. for us. I think uh, this film will give a, a perspective that is new on, 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 on history in a way, uh, or at least how we see history. Mm -hmm. And uh, my goal is to try to kind of give you the, the insight of how the time can, can could, could pass in, in the past, I don't know. So, yeah. Uh, okay, let's stop here. <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna, we're not gonna tell, tell too much, but it, it sounds incredibly compelling. And, and we're really, really like all of us, I, I guess everyone in the film scene, but mostly people from Montenegro um, are really excited to kind of watch it. So we hope that the COVID time is gonna kind of be a little bit easier um, in, the, in, the next, in the next few months um, so that you can start working on it. Um, I would like to tell the participants, if you do have any questions you can, or, or remarks or comments, you can uh, write them in the chat box. So don't be shy, <laughs> just uh, write whatever you feel. Um, uh, Greta, when, when, um, 
when people apply on a yearly basis to any of the segments of the Torino lab, um, do you see maybe in the past, I don't know, couple of years, how the diversity level of uh, applicants has changed? Are there, is, 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 is there a specific kind of part of the world where people apply more for the Tolino app or is it like really completely internationally widespread and it's kind of a balancing, balancing situation? Uh, well, actually, it's quite internationally. We uh, receive applications also from very remote areas of the world that uh, also we, are, we, we weren't, weren't sure we had reached. Mm -hmm. um, so this is nice. Um, also because it's, uh, it's, it's good to, to, be, to be able to support uh, filmmakers from all over the world. Um, and also to variate year by year, we try also to welcome uh, um, new people and new kind of cinema forms. Also, we recently opened, um, we used to work only on fiction feature films and from a couple of years, we opened Feature Lab to, to animation and documentary and hybrid forms. So we, we try to have a wide scope um, we have a lot of applications from Europe, but also a lot of applications from both North and South America, uh, and also quite many applications from e Asia. So I must say it's quite diverse, and um, we receive uh, many applications every year. For example, for Script Lab, which is our program where you can apply only as a writer director with a treatment, so with, without uh, needing to have a producer. We have 20 places every year and we receive uh, almost 400 applications for 20 places, so it's a lot of competition. And for Feature Lab, we have 10 places and we receive about 140 applications. So also very competitive. That's why we have also created the uh, Torino Film Lab Next and Extended, where we can support more, more filmmakers because uh, our shorter workshop and we can do them uh, much, uh, much often. We have a question for you, Greta, <laughs> um, from Radisa. Uh, he says, since I know that Netflix has opened an office in Rome, does that have some positive influence on your projects? What is your opinion on these kinds of platforms such as Amazon Prime Video and Netflix? Okay, so well, the thing that it has opened an office in Rome, it's not really affecting us in the sense that we've been uh, inviting Netflix and other platforms to the meeting event since a few years, also because we also work on series. Um, Often uh, filmmakers and production that take part in uh, Torino Film Lab, probably because they are more uh, uh, more uh, art house films, they do not uh, are not so willing to collaborate with uh, with big uh, um, streaming services. Yeah. Yes, because sometimes they have uh, they want to 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 have some control or mm -hmm. the, it's not easy to, to agree on a festival strategy before. And also if, if, if the Netflix or another, another huge uh, uh, streaming platforms jumps on board very early, uh, it would be a problem for a possible sales agent or for international sales, theatrical release and everything. So it's not very common um, that uh, th there is an agreement of this. Of course, they are uh, among the players of, uh, of the, the times we are yeah. living. It's so it's, it's yeah. important to, to take this in consideration and uh, to have, a, to have a, a, a relation with them. And hopefully also in now that Netflix is no, no more the only one, a lot of platforms are, are coming and people are starting to use them more and more. Mm -hmm. So maybe they will also change the way they approach distribution, online distribution. And uh, let's see also after what, what has happened these years, what will be the future of, uh, of online distribution and theatrical distribution? 
uh, of course, the goal should always be to have the film been, been seen uh, as much as possible, but also being seen in, in the cinema, which means mm -hmm. film festival screening and having, having a good festival career for your film is uh, really important before it can go online or, or on other platforms. Um, uh, uh, Arisov also is, is saying, uh, just for fun, can you promise that you will bring the recipe of so-called il bicerin when you come to Podgorica? <laughs> yes, of course. Okay. <laughs> it's a uh, bicerin is a, um, a drink from Turin, from Torino. Well, you, you heard it. She promised. <laughs> um, yeah. Even uh, when we when we talk about all these streaming services and, and Netflix and and all the other options that are numerous now, how do you as a filmmaker feel about distributing your film on one of those platforms, or are you more of a traditionalist? Well, now to say traditionalist, who is you know only thinking about a cinema release and festivals and doing it really like live with an audience that can see it on the big screens. Well, I, I think, first of all, that uh, we kind of live in a culture where you have to be against something, which is not <laughs> good uh, for the beginning. Mm -hmm. And it's also very, I, but I, actually, it is good to be, you know, this to have this kind of, uh, you know, bad and evil thing uh, for, it's it's better for, for the ones that are powerful. So uh, I think everything should exist in a way. It's the thing, go, it, the thing is in, in balance. And uh, the film, the cinema, uh, if it is to, to be, then it has to be in theaters. Uh, I mean, that said, I mean, doesn't mean that you, you cannot watch films on the other platforms. And uh, basically today, uh, most of the people have this opportunity to, to use these projectors at home and stuff like that. Yeah. So you can, you can watch films through any medium. Uh, I believe that when, when when there is not uh, the idea in your head that the film should be presented in the theater, even though you can watch it on, on, on your laptop screen, but the idea of the theater has to be in your mind. So for me, that's, that's important. I think uh, what Greta said, uh, festivals are important. This culture uh, of watching films together and presenting films, presenting outdoors, I think that's, that's important. So we cannot lose uh, this because we will lose cinema. Uh, but, you know, uh, the goal is to distribute the film as much as possible. So streaming platforms is something that I'm not against, but I think that everything is in, uh, should be in a good balance. Mm -hmm. So the film should start in circuit in, at the festivals, big festivals would be good. <laughs> and then, uh, of course. What is, what is uh, one or some of your advices that you might give to uh, filmmakers who are also planning to apply maybe for the, and this is a question also for Greta, uh, for the Torino Film Lab next edition, but they're like a little bit insecure or they're not sure, you know, how the entire, because all these applications, as, as we know, are very exhausting and it's a process. And you also have to have a really good team around you. If you're a director, you want to have a good producer. If you're um, only a director, not a screenwriter, you also want to have a great screenwriter and it's like a teamwork thing from the very beginning. Uh, what would your advice be for someone who's, you know, thinking about applying uh, to the Torino Film Lab and yeah, is a little bit maybe scared off in the beginning from the entire process? I mean, there's nothing to be scared, that's for sure. Um, I would I encourage everybody who, who is willing to do that. Of course, I mean, it's uh, it's a free world in that sense. Uh, I, I think that just you, you have to start from, from the beginning. So uh, it's not the point, the point in time when you are applying for Torino Lab is easy because you, <laughs> what is the, the hardest part is to come to the point to apply for the Torino Lab. So you have to start from the beginning. You have to do some short films. You have to get uh, the crew together. You have to know your people. You have to believe in them. And then you make a team. And uh, then you do a lot of job, a lot of homework, a lot of stuff. And uh, if you have a good material, uh, you apply everywhere. 
uh, you apply uh, at the places that you think that will be the best for your project. And then, you know, things are, after that, things are not in your hands, but uh, if you have a good project, they will give you uh, their hand and you can, you can go further for, so I don't know. I mean, uh, there is not, uh, you know, a wrong or good way of doing films. And you obviously have to make a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, yeah, you, could, you can screw it big. You know, you can really make it. <laughs> so there are good mistakes and bad mistakes. Yeah. But basically, if you are honest uh, with yourself and if you really have something to say uh, and you work hard, then I think, you know, uh, things are happening. And... Uh, yeah, and I, I mean, it's not so serious. Just, uh, you know, take a chance. Just, just that. Yes, I, I do totally agree with uh, everything even said. And also, like, do not, uh, we do not expect to receive a perfect application if, if we receive a, a project which is, which is totally perfect with a perfect script and everything is in place <laughs> and the budget, what shall we do about it? I mean, we would be not useful. So mm -hmm. the, uh, what's important is uh, it's, it's uh, your film and your project and, and to be sincere about it uh, and with yourself also, and just uh, give it a try. Of course, with, uh, with the good amount of, uh, of, um, of time and, uh, and dedication to it. And if you have any questions or any doubt about anything of the application, you can always write me. I'm here. We can have a call. No worries. <laughs> so you heard it, everyone. Um, there's nothing to be um, scared or um, afraid of. Um, we're we're going for We're coming towards the end. Uh, we have like a little bit under ten minutes left um, to talk uh, about something on a maybe lighter note. What are the things that you are um, in, because even you said you're pretty much locked down uh, somewhere. Um, what are the things that you are watching now? What are the series and films that inspire you or something that just helps you to go through this entire emotion of being isolated and waiting for your kind of things to move on and, and, and films to happen? You want to go first? <laughs> you, you can go first if you want to, yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, I'm uh, I ha I'm having a hard uh, hard times, you know, being uh, uh, disciplined, you know, and uh, <laughs> so because I'm I'm a chaotic person in a way, in a way, but I, I, I do my best. I try to to practice. I try to read a lot. Uh, I watch two films a day, probably. Uh, sometimes I, I binge, uh, you know, Netflix series and then, I'm, <laughs> and then, I'm, then I'm sick of it for, for a couple of months. Uh, but basically I watch films. Uh, you can, I don't know, I mean, what would be my... my Do you have uh, a recommendation for us? Called, called Mubi, for example, which mm -hmm. is giving, which is giving <laughs> like uh, a year of watching films for 40, euros for example so that's that's a good way to spend time uh i don't know i mean uh, yeah last 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 night i saw a film from argentinian director mariano limas linas mm -hmm. and that was a revelation for me for example so yeah i, I don't know and yeah i'm I, i'm walking a lot a lot i, I, I take a, a long walks <laughs> that's that's what i do that's a good combination a lot of films and a lot of walking so you balance it off and Greta, what about you? Uh, well, I also like quite recently, a few months ago, subscribed to to Mubi to <laughs> do something. We're in, all uh, Mubi lovers. <laughs> yeah, but the catalog is very good. I must say, it's a mix between uh, re-seeing things that I haven't been seeing for a while because I didn't have a, a only had maybe a VHS of it and couldn't play it anymore. Um, so the movie is uh, helping and um, I also watch a lot of shorts partly from uh, for work mm -hmm. uh, but it's also something very inspiring which I like um, so, which is not so much uh, 
common to to see but also also movie in this case is selecting quite a lot of shorts recently trying to put some focus on it and uh, it's sometimes a good alternative to watching uh, an episode of a series watching a few shorts uh, it will take the same time then you can discover in different universe different directors and be able to follow them in their careers as they move towards future films um we uh if, if there are any last remarks or questions from our uh participants do write them now because we're going coming towards the end of our session um yeah i would i would just like to to agree with both of you because movie is also my <laughs> my kind of secret secret thing but also um this you know discovering and watching um films that are not not even from our time anymore, but were maybe not that, you know, they were underground back back in the day and are available to watch now. It's it's just enriching. And I, I think it's wonderful to hear that, for example, Ivan as a filmmaker is constantly working and educating himself, even though he's already a filmmaker and, you, and he has, a, you know, he's done a film, he's working on another one. But it's very important that our young filmmakers and everyone we have young students in the audiences and, and high school kids who are in love with film and who would like to pursue film as their uh, profession. And it's very important to kind of teach them to educate themselves broadly and to also watch a lot of films because from watching you're kind of learning also a lot. Um, so. Yeah, that would be also my last word for this webinar. If you have anything to add, you can. Um, well, and also watching films at film festival is uh, fun, it's really crucial for film education. So I, I always suggest it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, we agreed on this note and this was a great promotion for our festival. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, so thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Greta, so much for participating in this call and this talk. We hope to uh, see you both live, maybe on next year's festival. Ivan, good luck with the film. I hope that you're going to start shooting as soon as possible. And uh, Greta, good luck with the work at, and the prepping for next year's to Torino uh, Lab Edition. And thank you once again, guys. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, bye. 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 bye.